to last November at that meeting. Uh, subsequently, as I said, there were other, several other meetings uh, beginning in January. I attended virtually all of them from that point forward. And again, these were meetings held primarily between one or several members of the resort's uh, POA board and staff, along with myself and the town manager, and at time, other staff that we thought was appropriate, and in particular at a point in time, we called on our uh, police chief and some of his staff to give us some guidance in regards to the traffic laws and jurisdiction of the town. And so in January of 2018, on our agenda, we had the item, uh, we thought we would be ready by February, our February meeting, to have a draft ordinance to present and to hold a public uh, hearing on that ordinance that would be followed based on the public input with the adoption or not of the golf cart ordinance. At, at a point in time in early February, and I believe it was on the 6th of February, during another one of these continuing meetings that were going on between the town staff and the, um, and, and the representatives from Rumbling Ball, the leadership, the, um, the initial request, which was solely to operate golf carts on a stretch of Buffalo Creek Road that extended, I, I think in general, in general terms, from Winesap Road uh, to the main gate, the gatehouse, uh, included a short stretch of road extending from the intersection there where Buffalo Shoals intersects with uh, Buffalo Creek up to a, a trailhead uh, that extended up into some of the residential neighborhoods uh, it, it included Schumont and Water, Water, Side. there you go, Waterside, you'd think I'd know that as a resident, um, and then extended down past the main gate uh, to Young's Mountain uh, to allow folks to come down from that area of, uh, of the resort, the neighborhoods in that area of the resort. So that was the initial uh, request. At that time, I think it was, it was unclear or not known that in fact all of the roads in the resort may be subject to the town's jurisdiction as it relates to the enforcement of traffic regulations. And at this February, uh, February 8th meeting, we asked our chief of police and some of his staff to join us and express some concerns they had about the ordinance that had been, that had been drafted at that point, which only included those roads I just described. At that meeting, uh, the chief advised us that, in fact, other roads, in fact, virtually all of the other roads, in his opinion, uh, that were inside of the gate house, behind the gate house, and in the neighborhoods which were not behind the gate house in Rumbling Ball Resort, were actually classified as public vehicular areas, uh, areas that uh, were subject to public use, vehicular use, and therefore, uh, in, in his opinion, and apparently as we went forward to research that topic in the state statute, uh, chapter 20, uh, we learned that is the case. Having been a resident in Rumbling Ball Resort myself <laughs> since, uh, for, for the past seven years in Apple Valley, outside the gate, I will tell you that was uh, kind of a revelation to me. I wouldn't say m my opinion was that, the, that there was no jurisdiction in those areas, but it was a murky area. I never really knew who had jurisdiction. All I knew was that the, that the Rumbling Ball security uh, patrolled those streets and those neighborhoods, and that on occasion I would see uh, Lake Lord police in and about those neighborhoods, mainly on the roads that I just described, the Buffalo Creek, uh, Buffalo Shoals, and, and the portion in front of there. I was aware that on several occasions that I was aware of, there had been traffic incidents inside the resort, in fact, behind the main gate, where the Lake Lore police were called upon to come and uh, involve themselves, let's just say that. And so I didn't know, at least at that point, was aware that 
if there was some type of a traffic incident behind the gate that at least the Lake Lord police were called and, and that they did respond. So that always been a murky area for me. The chief's remarks were a bit of a surprise to me, uh, but based on that and based on reading uh, the definition of what a public vehicular area is, comparing it to what we have that exists in, in, uh, in the Rumbling Ball Resort, uh, I would have to say that that does seem to ap apply, that the golf cart ordinance, the use of those roads for, uh, for golf cart usage uh, s seems to me to be something that needs to be permitted or allowed in order for it to occur without being in violation of our local ordinances, traffic ordinances. And so at that point, we, we decided we would change gears. We, we decided the ordinance had to be uh, rewritten to include not just the three roads that were originally envisioned, but all of the roads in, uh, in Rumbling Ball Resort, and that we also had received a request from Lake Lore Village that they be included in the ordinance, and so we decided to postpone for a month the public hearing and, and to reschedule it for March, during which time uh, we redrafted the ordinance, uh, republished it, and made it available then for the public hearing at our March meeting. At the March meeting, we held a public hearing. The ordinance had been published. We asked for public comments, and frankly, we received none. Uh, on the basis of that, then, we adopted the ordinance at that meeting, uh, and we published that ordinance, and, and thereafter, that ordinance became, I guess, a a matter of public information as the implementation moved forward. The implementation being that included in the ordinance was the requirement that uh, golf carts needed to be registered in order to be able to drive on the roads and that that registration process included an inspection and, and, uh, and the issuance of a decal so that the golf carts that were permitted could be identified on the roads for the police officers patrolling and that, um, and that the necessary safety equipment, which we prescribed in the ordinance, uh, was in fact uh, on, on the cart. And so at that point, I, I, I believe what's happened is that the general public in the resort, residents in the resort, became keenly aware that all of a sudden, after years of driving uh, without regulation, virtually with no interference, um, that suddenly, their golf carts required uh, a registration and an inspection and in many cases equipment uh, in the ordinance that is not, was not uh, part of their, is not on their golf cart. And so uh, I know in some cases that represents uh, an expensive investment in order to upgrade a golf cart. I have, in, I've asked uh, for a representative from the golf cart dealership uh, from Forest City that does a lot of the work on golf carts in this area for the resort and for residents that own the carts uh, to be here. I've spent time with him trying to understand what normally, because I don't own a golf cart, what comes on a golf cart and, and what would need to be added to meet our requirements. And um, he's here to address that. I've gone over that equipment with him, uh, generally speaking, and he can speak for himself, but generally the types of safety equipment that we're requiring other uh, towns in our area including Spindale and Forest City are also uh, either requiring or in, they're in the process of adopting ordinances that would require virtually that same safety equipment. The model ordinance I think the issue I've heard the model ordinance that was issued has some uh, but not many of the requirements that we we had in the course of issuing the regulations we received a lot of after the fact public comments that um, things that are in the in the ordinance uh, uh, do not appear in the checklist and things in the checklist do not appear in the ordinance and now i'm talking about the safety equipment so there was a problem with consistency between those two documents and so clearly there is a need if for nothing else than to fix the consistency in, in those two documents and we attempted, we recognized it was there. Uh, in some cases, uh, we, you know, we've 
removed some requirements. In other cases, we've just simply made the two documents uh, consistent. Uh, the major issues that we saw were that the original ordinance prohibited the driving of golf carts after sunset, but required golf carts to have headlights and taillights. Clearly, that doesn't fit. And so we've amended the ordinance to allow for the driving of golf carts after dark as long as they have headlights and taillights, which means if you don't have them and you don't intend to drive your golf cart after dark, then you're not, you won't be required to have that on the golf cart. There are other safety um, items, including seat belts, uh, the triangle on the back of the of the uh, golf cart, just the one triangle, not three-sided triangle, but a triangle with three sides um, on the back of the golf cart that, in, that indicate a slow-moving vehicle, standard uh, standard item, safety item on, on vehicles of that nature. You see them on other motorized vehicles that are slow-moving. So that's a requirement. Um, we require uh, a mirror so you can see behind you uh, as a safety uh, issue if you're on a public thoroughfare on a roadway you, you know it makes sense to us that you would be able to not have to turn around uh, while you're driving to see who's behind you so a mirror uh, and you can either have a turn signal if you don't have a turn signal and I know a lot of golf carts do not then you're uh, you're able if you're if you know how to do hand signals signal a turn and you can demonstrate that during the registration process we'd ask you to, to do that so I may not have covered all of those items. We certainly would want to hear from you if there are others that are problematic. A couple things I want to say, and then I'll, I'll stop talking and we'll call for public comment. It was never the intent of the Lake Lord Town Council to extend or overreach its regulatory authority or jurisdiction uh, <coughs> over the roads of, uh, of Rumbling Ball Resort. Uh, the situation that we have today has existed forever. It's been, in my opinion, a gray area. It's never been, that issue has never been, to my knowledge, clearly resolved. And unfortunately, uh, this, this issue has brought that to the surface. It's, in a sense, uh, opened the can of worms uh, let the cat out of the bag or whatever you want to use but that's why we I think why we are where we are I don't think the uh, leaders uh, or the managers uh, of rumbling ball had any idea when they came to us with the with the request that some of these issues would surface uh, I'm pretty sure if they knew that they may not have come here um, nor did the town understand at the beginning the ramifications of adopting a golf cart ordinance uh, and particularly as it related to rumbling ball we had never done that before and so we're 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 all kind of treading in some new territory the town council is trying to do the best that it can uh, to accommodate the needs of rumbling ball resort it's a wonderful feature to be able to drive your golf cart all over that resort. We didn't do this to try to prohibit you from doing this, nor, did, nor is our intent to do this to raise revenue uh, at $15 a golf cart uh, on a $10 million a year budget. I hope you could understand this is not our objective. Yeah. Um, our objective was to allow this to happen in a, in a legal and appropriate way and to do it in a way that um, protects the citizens of the town, the residents of Rumbling Ball from a safety standpoint, and also the town from a liability standpoint as it relates to our obligation uh, to police the streets and public uh, areas that are within our town. So with that, um, I will go ahead and begin the public comment, and I'll take people in the order that they're signed up, and the only ground rules that we have, there's, there, a total of, of uh, five, five citizens signed up, and with, with five citizens, I think we can allow our maximum amount of, uh, of comment time, which is five minutes, and so we'd ask you to limit your time to five minutes. We, we keep loose watch on that. 
Uh, I'll let you know if you're getting close to your five minute limit. We'd ask you to please uh, keep your comments positive. I know some of you it's an emotional issue. Uh, you've been here for a long time and driving your golf cart's an important thing. But this, this, you know, I hope you can understand we're all trying to do what's good for our community. And I would hope you keep your comments in a positive and constructive manner in accordance with our uh, community covenant. And so with that, I would ask um, Fran Neary, uh, who I know to be a member of the, of the POA board, to come forward. Fran, if you would. Sure. So I have written my comments down so you can read them and listen at the same time. Okay. And so, Fran, if you would, and if all other uh, public would, introduce yourself and, uh, and and give your address, you know, in the community. Thanks. Okay. Um, should I speak here? I just speak. Fine. Okay. Members of the town council, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today on the topic of the golf cart ordinance. My name is Fran Neary, and I'm a resident of Lake Lore, living in Rumbly Ball Resort. I live at 137 Sandy Ridge Drive. Sandy Ridge Road, excuse me. As you are probably aware, the proposed golf cart ordinance, if adopted as pu recently published, and I guess it's been adopted, will have a significant impact on the citizens of Lake Lure who reside in Rumbling Ball Resort. For decades, many res RBR residents have owned and driven golf carts on roads, roads maintained by the resort. The residents had the ability to drive to various amenities within the neighborhoods and other neighborhoods within the resort while avoiding traffic and travel on sta state roads, state and county roads. The majority of the residents' golf cart travel is confined, is confined within specific resort neighborhoods. For example, and this is not all inclusive, residents behind the gate usually drive their golf carts only behind the gate. Apple Valley residents, usually the golf carts stay within the Apple Valley neighborhoods or the Apple Valley golf course, which they can access through, through um, by staying off state roads. And Schumann residents, their golf carts travel within the Schumann neighborhood, Waterside, they come, but sometimes they do come. Some, some of them come across the uh, road on, at Buffalo Shoals and a little bit on Buffalo Creek to, uh, get, to get to the resort amenities behind the gate. But it's only a very, very small amount of travel where they're on state or county roads within the <coughs> purview of the town of Lake Orr. The usage of golf carts by RBR residents described above has been allowed and practiced by RBR residents for decades. To the best of my knowledge, this usage of golf carts has not resulted in many significant or any significant incidents because of these reasons. One, people driving within the resort are very aware that residents are traveling via golf carts on the residence roads. Two, residents driving golf carts within the resort are, are aware of vehicle traffic and usually yield to the road to cars and truck traffic. Three, the designated speed limit on the resort roads is well below the 35 mile an hour speed limit, speed limit of the town of Lake Lure roads. It's, I think it's posted at 15 miles an hour in, in, unless it's posted differently somewhere. The lower speed limits within the resort enhances the safety of golf carts sharing the roads with other vehicles. And five, and four, the very limited traffic on the resort roads as compared to the amount of traffic found on state and county roads within the town of Lake Lore also enhances the safety of golf carts traveling on resort roads. My request to the members of the town council, and I make this request on behalf of the many citizens of Rumbling Ball and Lake Lore who are sitting here right here now, those are a small amount of the people who have expressed interest, is that the town of Lake Lore ordinance be modified to remove the list of Rumley Ball Resort Roads from Section 405, 74.05, Manner of Operation, Item 5, and include the list of the Rumbling Ball Resort Roads in Section 74.04, Operation of Golf Carts Allowed, Exceptions, under Item 2, Exceptions. The requested modification of golf carts traveling on roads identified in 74.05, manner of operation, and those are the state and county roads within the town of Lake Lore. Mm -hmm. The golf carts would still have to adhere to those regulations if they decide to do so, and, but it would protect the golf carts within the ma roads maintained by the, um, by the resort. Mm -hmm. If the town council modifies the ordinance as I, as I am requesting, 
This will allow the Rumbling Bald residents to operate golf carts as, as, as has been the practice for decades. It gives Rumbling Bald residents the opportunity to drive on resort roads without having to incur additional costs to modify golf carts as required in the current draft of the ordinance and the list of safety features related to the ordinance. It saves the town of Lake Lure money related to inspection and administration of regulations for golf carts that travel predominantly on resort maintained roads. Current practices have demonstrated that golf carts used on Rumbling Bald Resort maintained roads do not require the same level of regulation as golf carts that travel on designated state and county roads. Thank you for your service to the community. I encourage you to modify the golf car ordinance as I have requested. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. Appreciate that. Well, well said. Okay, uh, next I'll ask uh, Joe Horowitz to come up and uh, introduce yourself and your, give your address. Thanks, Joe. My name is Joseph Horowitz and my address is 273 Bluebird Road in Lake Lure in the resort. I'm also a POA board member as well for the resort, but I'm leaving the POA comments to Fran. I'm speaking as an individual right now and citizen as opposed to an actual board member. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to bring up was a couple of things. First one is just my request, and I hope you all were joking earlier, but please do not have any more meetings this early in the day. <laughs> I still have to work, and I've got a couple of people who've been blowing up my phone while I've been sitting here wanting me to do some things for them. So if you could just have all meetings like you normally do at 6 p.m. or at some point after, I, sorry, I think it was 6 p.m., but at least some point after regular business hours. Five, thank you. That would just make things a little bit easier for myself and for other people I know who weren't able to be here today, who at least wanted to hear what was going on because they're not physically able to. Second thing I wanted to bring up is regarding section 74.05 numbered paragraph number five about at the very end adding the roads within rumbling bald resort as public vehicular vehicle areas as relates to chapter 20 specifically of the north carolina general statutes i would request that you remove that specific language regardless of what other modifications you may make but removing about chapter 20 of the north carolina general statutes my concern is, is that as a town, I don't know what authority you necessarily have to decide what areas fall under North Carolina law or county laws, and I think that would be better suited to be addressed either by the state legislature, by the counties, or by the court system of North Carolina. I don't think that this is something that's necessarily appropriate or necessary for this ordinance and should be left out. The second thing I want to bring up is about the apparent discrepancy between the list of exceptions and the Rumbling Bald Resort. And specific, I'm referring to re exceptions letter number, <clears throat> excuse me, B, referring to gated communities. Now, I don't know where exactly you all are in the gray areas to designate what is a gated community differ from and I don't know enough of the sorry. reference again where you're at. Oh, what? 74.04, <laughs> numbered paragraph two, subsection B is in boy. Got it. Thank you. So I'm not sure what your decision is to designate whether Lake Lore is considered, or sorry, Rumbling Bald Resort is considered a gated community or not. I think that would be best approached by you all and explained to everybody as to why Rumbling Wall does not fall under a gated community and express, ex, express exactly why that is because I have a suspicion that some of the members of the resort may wish to modify the physical attributes of the resort in order to make it fit into a gated community to make it an exception. I don't know that for sure, but as an individual, I'm taking a guess there will probably be some people who would like to do that. Also, if you're following this under public vehicle areas as defined under Chapter 20 um, of the North Carolina General Statutes, and specifically, their definition section and going over definition number 32 for public vehicular areas, mm -hmm. There appears to be a discrepancy as well that 
they talk about roads within gated communities, but they don't define what a gated community is. And again, I think that might be something better for the courts to deal with, and from my understanding, they have dealt with it in certain instances as to what's a public area and what is not. And so I think you would need, well, sorry, let me rephrase that. I think you would be best suited to put in why exactly Rumbling Ball falls outside of a gated community and the reasons why. And also putting in, if no other changes are made to the ordinance, something that allows at least ease where if Rumbling Ball changes its physical designation to make it a gated community, that it won't require a new ordinance being written or some sort of injunction or anything like that being filed in order to make it a smooth transition for the resort, at least whatever areas do become gated communities, even after this point, whether it's the resort or any other neighborhood. Lastly, I just want to say that I really appreciate and thank you all for looking at these safety issues. I walk my dog a lot at night and living in a beautiful area that it is, a lot of people like to come and visit and enjoy spending you know, a weekend vacation or something and it always, always concerned me about golf carts driving around without any headlights or brake lights, especially when I'm walking a black Labrador Retriever. It's not exactly always the safest of situations, even though I do try to keep things lit up. So I do want to thank you for looking at these specific areas. And as an individual, I do agree with the measures that you're taking in order to keep the public safe, whether they're in the golf carts, walking, or driving a vehicle. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate your comments. Uh, William Murray. You have to get real close. Yeah. Get, yeah, and get close. When you, um, sorry uh, for the yes. system and the sound. <clears throat> the That's all right. Uh, my name is William Murray. I live at 177 Hillview Drive no, in Lake Lore. Can't, can't hear, Phil. Can't oh. Hear. Hello. Is that better? Yeah. yeah yes. That's that good. Good. Much better. Than my name is William Murray. I live at 177 Hillview Drive in Lake Lure. Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm here today. I want first of all thank everyone for their time. Uh, the golf cart uh, information that I just gave all of you uh, for the ordinance, I'm, I'm looking for an exclusion uh, from the golf cart path that comes down from Waterside. It hits, that hits uh, Buffalo Shoals, and it basically is 100 yards, plus or minus whatever the, that is. It's not very far, but in time-wise, I just timed it this afternoon, coming up here, and it's 14 seconds to the bridge in my electric golf cart and nine more seconds to the gate. So 23 seconds, the liability is not that, that extreme. Uh, I, I'm looking for something that, uh, and I think everybody realizes where that is. And, and it's very functional for the effect that Waterside, um, also uh, Schumann Estates, and you can actually navigate as well other part places including Apple Valley. There's a way, oh, so you've got a map that's a way to do that. Yeah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to to see if you can consider that exclusion. And with a caveat that we're going to create a signs, you know, signs from, uh, from one end to the other, that 100 yard stretch, that vehicle traffic can see it's clearly lit or clearly disclosed. So for a safety factor. Okay, so I think that, you know, I don't know if we need any paint on the roads or anything like that I think I think at least a couple of good signs would be nominal that would be that would be great It'd be logical um, also uh, if we can get it you know to the point where the carts are grandfathered in I've got a 20 year old cart God bless it it's I just got new batteries in it and uh, it's a nice pond tree that's LED lit I mean I just you know how it is in like in the villages in Florida, it's a huge golf court, golf environment, and they've got thousands of carts. That infrastructure was set up specifically for golf carts as well, so they have their own unique path. Um, we do not, but we're trying to amend and do the best we can and really reduce the liability from all, from all over. So if we can find a, a, a great logistical path from Apple Valley and I think we've got one we there's already a, 
a tunnel that goes underneath the road. So we're not on the road at that point. We can, we can come down through the golf course, navigate to Schumont, uh, and take the, um, the little gravel path down through Waterside, and it just dumps right onto, on, onto Buffalo Shoals. There is a way to do that and minimize the risk for everybody. And, and if someone wants to be on the main road, God bless them. That's a lot of risk, and I would never do that. But my caveat is, is to try to, uh, with your blessing, to get that road um, set up to where it's visually, uh, n you can't miss the signs. And it's, and, and it's uh, you know, it would be, be absolutely wonderful that can happen. Um, so that's, that's really it in a nutshell. I'm just looking for an exclusion for that. Um, and and um, please, let, please let me know. Thanks. Well, thank you, Bill, very much. I have your exhibit, and we'll make copies of that for all the, all the commissioners. Uh, all right, that uh, brings us to the second sheet. And first up is Larry Walker. My name is Larry Walker, and I live at 193 Downing in Apple Valley. And I'd first like to uh, congratulate the board for uh, looking into uh, this. Um, I think that it has become improportionate as far as what was originally asked for. Uh, <clears throat> Sir, I, I hate to interrupt you. You're going to have to move closer. I'm sorry. For the I'm benefit so, of everybody. I'm here. sorry. Can you hear me now? I think they can. Okay. Um, I think that, that this has been uh, uh, improportionately uh, uh, exaggerated as to what it originally was asked, you know, for uh, access as far as rumbling bald is concerned. But um, uh, I... I I understand your concerns as far as safety, and I think all of us as far as members, and I've been a member for 22 years, uh, we understand the safety aspect of it, and I personally do not have a problem uh, with the, the state uh, and county roads that uh, are associated with this. And uh, for those that want to, which I think is a very few, uh, travel that road uh, should be required to have regulations uh, regarding a motor vehicle and uh, uh, I don't think anybody objects to that part of it uh, where the objection is coming in uh, is including all of the roads in the resort which is going to cut off the access for most people that have golf carts uh, the primary reason for having a golf cart inside the gate is to get to the restaurant or to get to the amenities uh, to be able to enjoy uh, the resort for what it was designed for. But uh, uh, with these kind of regulations that are being proposed, uh, it's going to put a terrible imposition on all of the property owners at Rumbling Mall. And... Um, I think that it's going to create a headache for the city of Lake Lure in uh, regulating these things. Uh, as to the legality of the, uh, the, the private roads, I agree with previous speaker. I think this is something that's going to have to be looked at from the legal aspect and uh, a legal definition of uh, private roads. Uh, most of what they asked me to, to represent uh, was pertaining to some of the things that you've already covered, so I'm not going to go over those again. Uh, again, uh, we, we agree with the, the regulations on the state roads and the county roads that uh, are uh, maintained by the city and the state and the county, but uh, uh, the regulations regarding the other roads, I think that there's a lot of opposition to. And I appreciate y'all's consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. And then uh, lastly on our list, uh, Dave Leitzman. Friend Larry. Uh, covered your. Covered and represented us well as a residents inside the gate. 
open source. So thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave, for that, repeating that. Um, all right. Well, I guess then it's up to the town council now. That Any, anybody else? No, there was no one. Is there anyone else that didn't speak that wants to? Oh, okay. David, yeah. uh, come on up. Yeah, introduce. Hello, my name is David Zakrich. Um, I currently just moved to 422 Whitney Boulevard, which is in Rumbling Ball Resort, but be a short time and then I'll be at the high road court so anyway um, just I actually wanted to just jump up here and I appreciate the time um, understand completely kind of how this has developed and and the reasoning behind it it makes does makes a lot of sense um, coming from a person that has been pulled over about three times coming from the waterside golf cart path into the gate to have a decal that makes that so it doesn't happen again is appealing um, I already have all of the safety issues on there, so I'm, that's not an issue. I do understand the fact that um, a process of being grandfathered in or, or having the roads within the resort be um, not included, that does make sense for somebody that does not want to go on the public roads. Um, and then also do understand where signage to that golf cart path from Waterside um, to the gate would make perfect sense because that is actually Granted, unless you're coming from Young's Mountain, that is the only point of where you'd have to be on the public roads. Really, you can access all of Apple Valley from there. Um, so that does make sense. I did want to just, um, one of the reasons I was coming tonight was, or today was um, one of the stipulations about after sunset not being able to drive, but it looks like you've already made that amendment, so I appreciate that. The other one, I just wanted to jump up here real quick. Um, Having have seat, seat belts on my car, turn signals, brake lights, all that, um, I also have two small children. And one of the things that I saw that was being added was um, seat, uh, car seats. <laughs> I'm not sure how long it's been since you've had young children, but bringing car seats in from one car to the other and then having to worry about golf carts would be just a pain in you know what. Um, if that could be removed, it'd be great. We are talking about a vehicle that's going less than 20 miles an hour, so. Um, but um, that was one of the things I wanted to bring up because that is a pain using in a, in a regular car. Um, other than that, um, I mean, it's I, I understand where it's coming from, and I appreciate it in terms of a safety issue. Oh, and one th other thing I wanted to bring up. Um, I understand the inspection process. I was hoping maybe we could look at something that would be using technology a little bit more and possibly be able to do the inspection online uh, via pictures, video, something like that. Not everybody that has a golf cart has a trailer to get it up to town hall. Um, I understand we're going to try to have certain days that they come. To the officers would come to the resort. However, if you're out of town or something that. You know, if there was some idea of how we could use technology to it, our advantage to for that, that'd be great. But I appreciate it. that's all I had to say. And thank you for your time. Thank you, David. Uh, one more. Two more. Recognize two more. Okay. I'm Dick McCallum. I live at uh, 165 Chinkapin inside the gate at the resort and spent eight years sitting where John Moore is sitting right now, so been here before. Uh, one question that I have and then one comment. The question I have is, does this regulation also apply to the municipal golf carts at the, uh, at the municipal golf course? Uh, it, it doesn't apply to them. Uh, because there are no roads uh, in and around the municipal golf course that that folks would. But but they do it's, they do cross the <laughs> they do cross uh, 64 74. Places. Right. The the crossings are not. not Cro crossings are are not uh, the same as traveling along the road. You can cross a road at, at perpendicular uh, to the road without having to have an ordinance allowing that. Okay, just raising the thought. The comment I had is a relatively simple solution would be that, first let me mention that the resort has regulations as well. I, I don't know how many people who own golf carts know this, but we are required to have liability insurance, for instance, I do. And, and, and we all should, if we don't, we all should have liability insurance. But a relatively simple solution would be to simply exempt all golf carts that are 
regularly operated only on roads where the posted speed limit is 16 miles per hour or less. They'd be exempt from all of these regulations. So you don't have to, wouldn't have to change anything else in the ordinance then. Mm -hmm. Thanks Thank you. For that Thank suggestion. You. And then there was one more. Yep. Mike. Mike, Mike. Uh, yeah. And Mike, you might not just introduce yourself and in, in your affiliation. Uh, and, um, or, okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, I'm Mike Sechrist. Uh, I'm just a local, local golf cart dealer here that you mentioned earlier. And just wanted to mention you guys. I think, um, you know, more to me than anything, based on my experience in businesses I've been in the past, um, golf carts are user friendly. I think that's more important than anything else. Safety is number one, but they are so user friendly. This this means a lot because we're we're in the South. We want to be friendly. We want to be nice to people, and we want to reach out to people. And that means a lot to me in the business I'm in because I feel that in my business. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions you have about these upgrades. These upgrades can be a little bit expensive. I don't mind telling you. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the only thing I see that I want to just add, if we go through with this full vehicle equivalent situation with these um, new regulations, would be a horn. I never heard the horn mentioned. And that comes with most of these kits, the upgrades. You might want to consider that, but I don't know. I don't know how far to go. But that's just one little thing I want to mention uh, because they come with most of these kits that we do with the add-ons. Um, uh, another thing I mention: I'm not dealt much with the uh, regulations. I've dealt with a lot of communities and where we furnish carts, do upgrades. And most of them, it's an association I deal with, and their their rules are just not you know not this restrictive. So I'm not the one to ask these questions to that they're ask, you're asking the board. I'm you know I'm just here to answer anything you'd want to know about the golf cart itself physically. But anyway, I can be of any help. I'm just a local down the road. I'm about 20 minutes away. I'd be glad to help you guys with what what I know. And um, I just I just love the business. It's a user friendly little car it's just this i was in the car business for years i was in the furniture business we had furniture buying for years and then when i got in the golf carts it's like there's no titles there's no inspections it's just i sleep better at night it's a more fun user for your business so i'll be glad to answer any questions have just on the card it's simple things why you're up here uh and and why i invited you to come in in my meeting with uh, your manager and, and in the subsequent discussions with you uh both of you guys indicated that other towns uh, not far from here in Rutherford County are either have adopted or are considering the adoption of similar uh, golf cart ordinances yeah. in sections of or, or town wide. Um, right. And they've come to you apparently, and, and yeah. there's been some dialogue, and, and so right. you should be somewhat familiar with what they're. Uh, yeah. Looking at uh, yeah. uh, are we dissimilar? Uh, um, we're, dissimilar? We're right on cue. It's just um, like I said, the horn is on the technicality. If you get into all these, the regular, the first time I was familiar with the North Carolina, when they first voted this in about eight or nine years ago. When I went to the town meeting of Fairway City, they weren't even aware it was voted in. Mm -hmm. What you have to do once the state votes it in is voted in as a municipality. Okay, Cornelius was one of the first towns I was familiar with. You know, I know some folks there near Charlotte. It's all legal. It's been that way for years. Spindale jumped on board. I've talked to Forest City a little bit, and I don't know. They're sort of putting the finger on Highway um, Oak Street, which is a 45-mile-per-hour zone. They're, they're putting the finger there and saying, we, but you can cross that, and there's a lot of other streets that are 35 or less. I, I don't know why they, they keep pointing that that's the reason. They were actually a wheelchair victim that was killed there on that street and when that happened on that 45 mile per zone that's when we thought well they'll lower the speed limit but they they haven't so you know it's safety a lot of this is safety and i understand that's first but i just like the the business being a user friendly business it's just a fun business and i'll be glad to help you Ricky. thank you for your yeah. contribution bill excuse uh, yeah uh, mike he is a question for you before you Mike, uh, I've got a 20-year-old golf car. Yeah, I don't just say that again. And then, you know, you buy a kit for X amount of dollars, 
see that it's not what you're doing. You look at seat belts, uh, you look at the lights, front, back, brake lights, which is the pedal receiver. You look at it if you do the whatever there. Um, you can get into 450. I mean, if you don't do it yourself, you can save some money. Well, if I want to come to you and let me work here, you're going to do it yourself. Yeah. 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 We've already done a few for this cost. We've already seen people jump on board and buy we just said, that's fine, but we don't know what goods are yet. We'll be glad to help you. So we did two already. But you're looking at it. It can be 450 to 550. I'm just throwing that out there. If you don't go to the car, you have to go to the car. Mike, does Mike. that include the installation? Mike. 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 I didn't come back to the thing. Could you come back, please, sir? I, I have a question for you too. Uh, one of the one of the letters I got. Uh, mentioned a, uh, a cart that only had a single headlight right. uh, so what do you what do you do regarding that you put two others one on each side of that make it well, all together I know, I know your, your rule states one on each side and it's a little bit of visibility I think there's a little advantage to that if one burns out you still got a light if that one burns out in the middle you don't have any the reason I think they're doing that is we install a lot of the halogens they do strip lights and they're a strip and it's one light but it may run all the way across the cart Right. And we're doing a lot of that versus these little bulbs, you know, the old school. So the new, new technology is changing. And I think that's going to have a little bit to do with it. But that's, I mean, other than that, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, the lit area yeah. from the cart uh, uh, meets requirements for a vehicle uh, on distance, uh, projected light. On this one, halogens? Oh, yeah, they're brighter than regular yeah. bulbs. They're actually a better light. And they use a little less energy off the cart. The, your batteries. Yeah. So that's sort of the way the new thing that's coming up now that you're going to see more. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any other questions for him? Before? No, I don't. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Okay, well, I guess then that brings us to uh, the portion where town council mm -hmm. will now deliberate based on all the things we've heard and uh, things we know. I, I, I would just say as we set out on this discussion, I mean, there, there's, a, there's the broad issue, the big giant issue of regulating golf carts at all uh, w within all or portions of, of the resort. And I think that that, in my mind, uh, stems from what we per have perceived as a legal uh, requirement and in a sense as a town with jurisdiction, a legal obligation. And I get that from discussions I've heard and, and have come from our, our police chief. Now, we can all start the discussion or we can ask Sean uh, at this point to come up and cover that point with us quickly uh, would that be helpful commissioners if I, I think yes. we could start our, our uh, discussion let's go, let's go ahead and start let's go we can bring Sean in maybe as we get to that yeah, point yeah. I, I, I want to say this I've you know we've, I've been up here eight years and I've never dealt with an ordinance that have had more unintended consequences than this one uh, <laughs> the, the idea originally when it was brought to us from uh, Romney Ball was to just include an allowance that let golf carts use a part of the roads and it made sense that okay yeah let's do it there are other ordinances out there with other towns we'll model something after them and mm -hmm. uh, we'll be good to go and then all this other came up um, and, and I know how nice it is to have a golf cart out there and use it I lived out there for seven years myself uh, on fairway drive and we used our golf cart probably as much or more than anybody considering we didn't even play golf but it's uh you know very convenient there's a uh, traffic can get bad out there in the summer and it's nice to have it to, you about needed to have a find, find a parking place sometime um i think that uh I know, one thing that larry uh said mentioned two or three times that it was in proportionate and i agree with that i think what we've got here is in proportion and it's not what we've got is not what is not where we intended to land so I think that the best course would be for uh, I mean, I'll say right right up front that I agree with the comments that I've heard I think this has gone too far um, not for anybody by anybody's fault but I think we need to make this thing as absolutely simple as we can have the least amount of um, of uh, I, I, we may not even need to do inspections at all. 
um, you know, these are all adults owning these golf carts, and they know to have they need they need a headlight if they're going to drive at night. And uh, you know, we gum half of, half of what we do is dealing with a nanny state anymore, and I just don't think we need it all. But the it's going to take some going over this line by line and seeing what we can eliminate. And I don't think we're going to accomplish that. We can't accomplish all that this afternoon. It's going to take uh, a little bit of work. So uh, my suggestion would be to, you know, I guess hear from everybody uh, sitting up here. But my suggestion would be to that we um, suspend enforcing it for now. Until we've had time to review it and see how much we can cut out of it and get us to and and try to get us back to the spot where we wanted to be originally which was just allowing uh golf carts to use the road from uh wine sap down to where they cut off and go around and come out down on buffalo shoals and uh and 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 if there's a way we can work this thing where folks within the resort can continue to use golf carts like they always have that that would be my preference because um even if it is a gray area, it's been a gray area for a long time, and I'm not aware of any problems that have uh, arisen out there. And I know when Phil, I, I know when Phil came and made his presentation, he had the statistics on Roman Ball, which was zero, and also. Um, the other areas that have, have used them in there, there was basically no, there really hadn't been any accidents. Um, so I, that, that's where I'm coming from. All right. Okay. Stephen, you want to uh, weigh in on this? Well, I, I wanted to address uh, what was talked about on the public uh, vehicular areas, uh, the private streets from Mr. Horowitz, uh, the private streets and gated versus public. Uh, and and uh, Mr. Murray's uh, exclusion on the state road issue. Uh, I, I don't think we have the authority to grant an exclusion on a state road, period. Okay? No matter what. Uh, so I think any golf carts on a state road, no matter how long the distance, has to be, has to be governed accordingly by the state requirements. I just don't think we as a municipality have that authority. Of course, our attorney is not here uh, to, to verify that, but, but that's just my first thought on that. Uh, the, the public vehicular areas, and I've got in front of me the actual law on it, uh, the area, uh, there, there's four definitions of a public vehicular area. The one that applies the most consistently is the area is a road used by vehicular traffic within or leading to a gated or non-gated subdivision or community, whether or not the subdivision or community roads have been offered for dedication to the public. So uh, now, we had a distinction of private roads within a gated community because of the Lake Lord Village Resort versus the rumbling bald area. The Lake Lord Village Resort does not have any public amenities inside their gate. Therefore, those are all private roads within those definitions. Whereas rumbling bald has public amenities inside the gate and other areas of the resort, and therefore they meet that public vehicular area. So I just wanted to clarify that for you to try to answer those questions. Uh, I just don't think that we can do that exclusion and I don't think we can say we're going to ignore state law which is the GS 20 I think it does have to apply with in regard to certain aspects of this uh, if we're going to, to do it at all uh, the state model that was originally presented to us you it simply doesn't fit our topography and our roads we can't take a state model, and we learned that very well through zoning. Uh, when the zoning came from the east and was superimposed over this mountainous area, those rules simply don't work. Uh, and, and I noticed the one comment here, something similar to the villages in Florida. In Florida, it may work great. 
and here with the mountainous roads, the hairpin turns, the blind curves, and so on, and the hills, it, I just don't think it's going to apply as easily. Uh, so we have to be considerate of that. My number one issue is safety. Above all, uh, with regard to this, this uh, ordinance. I'm not opposed to the ordinance in general, uh, and I've stated that before, uh, and, but some things have become known to us now that weren't known to us before, and I, I think it would be improper of us to flat out ignore those things. Uh, so. Okay. Thank you. Stephen? John? Commissioner Kilby? Well, some of you in the audience will remember uh, years ago, uh, if you had your insurance with Farm Bureau Insurance, we had to add your golf cart onto your uh, auto policy for you to have coverage. At a time that was determined, I, I'm not sure and I can't, I'm, I'm getting too old to, to be too specific about what happened further back than a week ago. But uh, um, at, at a point, and I'm not sure if when the state golf cart ordinance was passed uh, that it was determined that as long as the golf cart was kept within a property uh, such as the gated community, and again, I think what is the definition of a gated community? I think that, I mean, I think we got other, we got some points we've got to clarify here before we're ready to finalize this thing. I agree with what was said down there. But at a point, it was said that if that golf cart is kept within the community, and if it is for recreational purposes only, and for use within the thing, that it was not necessary for it to be listed on um, an auto policy. So we took them off. And your, your uh, coverage from your liability policy on your homeowner's policy covered that. At one time, we even had to give evidence insurance to the uh, resort office that, that, you had that, uh, that you had that golf cart uh, insured. That goes back a ways. So um, I think we've got things that we need to get clarified. Uh, I do think, uh, um, uh, as w has been said by several, you know, this got way out of hand. Um, I do agree that uh, uh, we're regulated to death, and uh, if, if it's the reason we need to have the regulation, we need to have the regulation. Uh, and I think from a legal standpoint, um, we need to make sure that the, the towns where they should be from that standpoint um, and most importantly uh, need to make we need to make sure that you're where you need to be from from a from a liability standpoint mm -hmm. especially and I agree if you're driving if you drive that golf cart I can tell you from my company's if you drive that golf cart through that gate and onto the state highway and you have a wreck you're not gonna have any liability insurance coverage because you're outside your community when, when you go on that state road. So that's one of the important things that we need to be sure we address uh, and, uh, and get a, a legal opinion on that before we make any decisions what, what we're gonna do. So I, I, I don't want to see everybody have to, uh, uh, you know, spend 450, 550, $600 on their golf cart, it, you know, unless they're planning on being one of those that go down there and drive up across that 100 yards on Buffalo Shoals Road to go from from uh, uh, community to community. So, good. <laughs> Commissioner Cameron. Okay, I'm kind of with uh, Commissioner Moore. No good deed goes unpunished. Our intent was this was going to be a good deed, and kind of came back and kicked us in the teeth. But uh, basically, what I would re I would recommend is that we suspend the ordinance for a period of time. What I would like to see is I'd like to see the POA board members meet with their POA and establish exactly what they need. And just like this uh, map Mr. Murray did, sit down and discuss it. Because from what I've heard is some of the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing and vice versa. And, and so I think that needs to be resolved. And, and being a member of two POAs myself, I know how easy that gets out of hand. So. Uh, my first recommendation would be for the POA to meet with the POA board members. Then I'd like to see a, a meeting with our police chief, our town manager, and town attorney. I'd like to see 
see those ideas brought by the POA board after their discussion with their membership, identify the highways with a map like this one, all right? And I can pretty well say that, you know, if you're going on a public highway, you're going to have to have the lights and all. But what, but what we need to look at is where our police chief and our legal people are satisfied is what point pulling in at your gate is considered public access and what night. Well, it is not. Now, your restaurant and your two golf courses right there, you may have to do a displaced gate. That may be a requirement to get to your point. That at what point can we say all of this property is not public? Your restaurant is, your golf course is. It may require you go to that next intersection up there where you cut down to your swimming pool and put a gate there than anything beyond that. Or you may restrict activities, maybe divide it in half for this side can access, but to meet the legal criteria that's required for our, yeah. our enforcement, enforcement officers as well as, but if you could come together, have your POA board representatives come and meet with the police chief, a meeting with town manager, I'd ask our mayor to be there, and y'all work together. We're trying to help. We, I mean, we, I play golf. I love to ride the golf cart too. Discuss this as your final proposal and then have it submitted to us. We're here to help. We're not here to hurt, but let's just make sure that all of us are in the legal bounds and our police officers do a great job, but they have to enforce what's on the books from the state. So if we can define that for them and say at this point, this is now private property. As far as, as far as I'm concerned, if you're in that private property, you don't need anything. My only concern is if you leave the gate, I don't want you to run over by a truck. You know, so. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I agree with both suggestions to suspend it, but I think we be, need to be definite. Uh, if we postpone or suspend the, uh, currently the ordinance is valid and effective. So we do need to suspend it so the police are not required to take action on it. And, and I think we should set a date uh, uh, for hearing it again. And hopefully that during that time, everyone would have time to conduct the meeting at the resort and the meetings that Mr. Cam or Commissioner Cameron suggested. So I'm gonna make a motion that we suspend ordinance 74.04 or, or uh, I'm sorry, 74. chapter 74 golf carts until our July 10th regular council meeting. And at that time, I'd take it up again for discussion and, uh, and approval of a uh, public hearing of a new draft. And I'll second that. So. All right, and, and now discussion. we have for the purpose of, we have a motion and a second, and now we have discussion. Yeah, well, I, I, don't, I had another comment. I didn't realize Commissioner whoever was ready to make his, uh, 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 motion but uh, co one comment that was made bothered me a little bit and I'm going to say this okay I just read an article in the Asheville paper yesterday from yesterday's paper about jurisdiction and who's in charge of what and what does the Asheville police do in charge of and what's the Buckle County Sheriff in charge of I read that article yesterday ironically yeah. I think we need to be real careful wherever we live thinking we can pick and choose our protection that we get uh, I think that's dangerous ground to be walking on if, if we get into being in a situation, no matter where we live, if we think that we can pick and choose, okay, we want the police to come if it gets bad enough, somebody gets shot, but don't come in here trying to, you know, look to see if we're breaking traffic laws and stuff like that. So that's another thing I think the POA needs to think about some. And we may find out we don't have a choice. The state regulations may, may dictate what, what, that we don't get to choose. That's another thing I think that should come out of this is everybody has a clear understanding. It's just about kind of kept in the back of the closet, I think, all these years. So I think that's another issue that needs to be addressed at the same time. I agree. It's a very good comment. I, I would then extend that comment also. Um, being a resident over there, we uh, are used to seeing the Rumbling Ball Resort Security uh, Force uh, monitor the community and, uh, in a sense, um, uh, look for things in the community that don't look right, uh, people behaving in a manner that they shouldn't. Uh, but at the same time, uh, and James, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they, they do not have the power to arrest or they, are, they do not have firearms. They, in, in an event that a, a situation escalates, 
uh, the only uh, law enforcement available is the town of Lake Orr or, or the county. And so I think that that relationship has gone on, I think, in an, a fairly informal uh, and, and effective way. Uh, where security monitors, uh, you don't see much of the Lake Lore police, which I know some residents might question, say, well, we're paying taxes, where, and, and if the police are supposed to be over here patrolling, where are they? Um, but at the same time, I think the system that's evolved informally with your security working in partnership with the Lake Lore police seems to be working well. I don't know how the Lake Lore police would respond, but... Um, it, that may be another area as we go forward. You know, we've we've uh, opened up the can of worms, and uh, we might as well um, make you know make the best of this. So as we look at at the whole golf cart ordinance and who's got jurisdiction and who doesn't, I think there's another opportunity uh, for us to visit how uh, the resort is uh, patrolled and the security and the relationship to the town and and its uh, police. Uh, enforcement effort. So I would just add that. I, I have to add, after have you having said that, sir, uh, that my motion to suspend the ordinance in no way relieves the police of enforcing the laws they are required to enforce by state law. All right, and I want to make sure the police understand that clearly on my part. Uh, and, and, and I would strongly recommend, and I've seen golf carts on the state road over there already, and, and they shouldn't be there. So, Very good. Okay, are there any other comments? If not, we have a, a motion and a second, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, thank you very much. Can I make one more comment alpha of that? <laughs> After that. Well, to uh, Joe, uh, the gentleman who talked about our meeting times. <laughs> uh, this is a special, today's a special call meeting. We, we yeah. had this subject and another one to discuss. We didn't want to wait till next week. But uh, remember that these, these meetings are published. Uh, I'm not sure if the special meetings are live online, but they're recorded and available online. And most of our meetings, our regular meetings, are live and you can, you can see them, uh, you know, online. Uh, uh, we, we may have four meetings a year in a, in, over a golf cart or something where we have this many people at our meetings and we like it when we have this many people at our meetings because we like to have you involved in it so that you know we don't set meetings just to try to uh, you know make it inconvenient on, on anyone we have staff considerations that we make with that too so thank you Published, you're talking about what I'm being on the website, right? Is there any way you could put notices in like a mountain breeze or something? I mean, like a, a, we don't have a real newspaper. That's supposed well, to one of the good things that I know as a resident of the resort is the resort uh, publishes a very regularly a very good e newsletter. And I've seen this very issue <laughs> and other issues like this published in there. Um, I would think, uh, James, that, uh, that, that you, you have the benefit of that, whereas other parts of the town don't, you know, and we struggle uh, with people who, like me, you know, that don't just wake up in the morning and log into the town's website. Even as the mayor, I don't do that. And, and so getting it out like that, Facebook, we, we have a town Facebook page, and we push information like this out on a regular basis on that Facebook page, and you can also subscribe uh, you need to do that proactively. You can subscribe to the town's e-newsletter. Just go on the town website. I believe there's a hyperlink to do that. So there are things. That's a good point. Um, and we love the mountain breeze. There, there are the mountain breezers sitting uh, right there. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, they are tuned in to what, what goes on. And, and uh, uh, now they're, they'll, you'll be publishing monthly during the summer. Whereas in the winter months, it's by every other month, so it's pretty far apart, you know, that the... Uh, it's just easy to miss all that digital stuff if yeah. you're not in the habit of... I, I'm, I'm there's, with you. There's also, a, uh, there's also a placard on the inside of the... There, there's also a placard on the inside of the back door there that shows the, about the YouTube channel and, and so on to purview. And, and this meeting have, is ma recorded. Ma'am, if we have a special call meeting like today, we're required legally to... Uh, to give 48-hour notice for that. 
So we don't just decide we're going to have a right. meeting. We, we're required to do at least 48 hours notice. Okay. You're welcome. Michael? Yeah, one quick comment. I just want to throw this out. Um, I think we're going to have to Okay, we, we'll have to explore that if it's a state road, you know, you know them, <laughs> you know them. <laughs> yeah, that's a good suggestion, yeah. Mike. Thank you. All we right. will. Okay, uh, Stephen. Well, I don't know how many folks are leaving or how many are staying. Looks like there you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Five minute recess. Five yep. minute yeah. recess. Thank you. <laughs> Give them time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, we just need it. We just yes. <laughs> yes, sir. You're welcome. Don't forget, we got all Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure.